My name is Nicole Evans. I am from Simi Valley, California, and I have osteogenesis imperfecta. It is a bone condition that causes brittle bones and small stature. Being a person with a disability, it's ingrained in you that you already have to think ahead. I budget that into my travel time. Accident ahead at 2.2 miles. Fantastic. We're still on the fastest route. That's what every actor wants to hear on the way to the audition. <laughs> I'm auditioning for a network one-hour drama medical procedural show. It's a self-tape audition. I'm nervous. I've always been an actor, I guess. I was always involved in the school plays. I liked the fun of it, just getting to play and dress up. Then one thing led to another, and then once I graduated grad school, that's when I started pursuing acting professionally. Whenever I have an audition, Ryan always runs lines with me. <laughs> I try to be as word perfect as I can, so he catches me on that. We've talked about this. And why ask why? But man, it's hard to stop. Let's do some search. I love that one. <laughs> I usually make him do it like 50 times. <laughs> when I first started pursuing acting professionally, I got worried about will I be able to find work as an actor with a disability, but now that door is opening. For me, it's really important to see actors with disability on the screen where the role that they're playing has nothing to do with their disability. There is a want and a need to see authentic representation up on the screen and behind the camera. And why ask why, but man, it's hard to stop. Let's do some surgery. I entered in the Academy Gold program as a Rudiman Foundation intern. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And it turned out to be this roller coaster of education and friendship and learning about the entertainment industry. For our soundstage experience, we had a generic one-page scene, and it was so fun working with the director, changing your wardrobe to match the scene. It was a really interesting exercise that really kept you on your toes, and what was great about it is that we filmed it back to back to back. You just jumped in and did it, and that was a really good exercise as an actor. I think the most important thing I learned from the Academy Gold program was how important it is to know every side of the industry. It's pretty incredible what it takes to get a film to the screen and it really makes you appreciate all the work that goes into it. I encourage any actor or artist or any sort of filmmaker with a disability to get involved in the Academy Gold program. It's very inclusive and diverse and representation absolutely matters. I love this woman's acting. I love this woman, everything she does. Um, <laughs> I just noticed myself screaming it, but it's true. I mean, I remember going to the Disability Film Challenge Awards and watching this, this, this film, Human Helper. And I was just watching this woman and she is amazing. She's real, she's serious, she's funny. She could pull at your heartstrings and make you laugh at the same time. Nicole Lynn Evans. Oh my gosh, thank you for that marvelous introduction. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Thanks for having me. Oh my God, well, thank you, thank you. Um, now, do you go by Nicole Evans or Nicole Lynn Evans? I go by Nicole or Nikki. You can call me that too. <laughs> Nicole Lynn Evans was the name that was available at SAG. So I had to go with that. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I understand that one. I was lucky. I got the David Zimmerman. Although outside of SAG, I use David S. Zimmerman because there's like 250,000 of us running around. Wow. David Zimmerman is a good name. It's a good, strong name. Thank you. Thank you. It's stronger than this. <laughs> oh, my God. In fact, we have in our family club that meets, that hasn't met in a long time, but there's three David Zimmermans. So we all got together and took a picture and say, well, the real David Zimmerman. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, all in your family? There's three David Zimmermans? Yes. You know, in the extended family, we have this family club that used to meet that um, 
that had uh, you know maybe two three hundred people get together every so often oh my gosh yeah you know extended, wow. extended. the family That's tree amazing. i love that it's fun it was fun <laughs> i miss i miss those days uh, we'll we're gonna go back i'm confident we'll we are back. we we are gonna go back and we're gonna go back to the beginning of your time to when did you first say i like this acting thing <laughs> Um, you know, I've always been into the arts and into theater, and I was always involved in the school plays and in the choir. And my parents are very creative people, and they respect the arts, and they taught my brother and I to really, really the arts. And so it just kind of seemed like this natural, this gravitational pull towards performing and acting. And so I did it growing up all through school. And uh, then it, when it came time to go to college, um, for some reason, I thought like I had it in my head that I had to go to school to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. I don't know why, but it, I just thought that's what you had to do, you know? So when it came time to go to college, I enrolled in all of these math and science classes. And I'm, I love math and science. I'm good at math and science. But uh, <laughs> I wasn't exactly thrilled about sitting all day doing math and science. And, uh, you know, I, I took a bunch of classes and I came home really upset on my first day of school. And um, my mom was like, why don't you do what you love and, 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 and enroll in the theater classes or the art classes? And I just I didn't realize that that was something that you could do, that you could pursue an education in that. Yeah. So. I did. I, I enrolled in everything I could, got super involved in the school theater, uh, did tons of plays, got really involved, and the rest- This, this is, was college or- high Yeah, school? college. This college. was junior college and then undergrad and then eventually graduate school. So I went through the whole shebang, studying theater and performing arts. I loved yeah. it. So you really didn't start in the arts until college. I, yeah, studying it and pursuing it. Yeah. I mean, I just did it for fun when I was a kid in high school and junior high school, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, I love that. I love it. Now, do you like film or theater better? I like them both. I mean, I love them both for different reasons, you know. It's, uh, they're both a rush in their own way. You know, there is just something really cool about acting with the camera and trying different things, things in every take. And really, it feels so good when you nail a take and then, you know, the rush of seeing it air or screen, you know. But I gotta say, there's like nothing like performing live and hearing the roar of the crowd, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's unmatched. It's an amazing feeling. Oh my God. Do you have a, do, is there a favorite like theater piece that you have done that you go, oh, I remember when this happened, I knew this was what I, why I'm doing this. I, you know, I did the vagina monologues in college and that was my first really big thing that I did. And I have been in that show so many times in different places. <laughs> and different pieces. Uh, no, I always seemed to perform the same one. It was so funny because it was just like my thing. I did the flood monologue and I had so much fun doing it and having a Brooklyn accent and really portraying an older woman. And it was just, it, it was, it was so, so much fun. So oh, God. do you know, you know, Sheena Metal? No. Okay. I have to hook you both up because once we get out of quarantine, she does the vagina monologues every year. So. Sheena, <laughs> the flood monologue. <laughs> Let's do it. Nicole, Let's do it. I would Nicole, love it. <laughs> have, oh, it's great. She gets like every year and she gets a star studded cast. And, oh, and cool. Back. That would be so much fun. I'd totally do it again. Oh my God. And so now you're a writer as well. You you hit, wrote a pilot script? Yeah. So um, I wrote. I created my own original series called Shortcomings, and I co-wrote the pilot with my longtime creative collaborator friend, David Crabtree. We've done so many, so many things together, and we actually landed on the inaugural disability list, which features the top 10 scripts 
that has a main character with a disability from the blacklist. It's like a long explanation, but <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a, a, a level of certain. Yeah, the blacklist is a website where you submit your 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 screenplays or your pilots and they get reviewed by anonymous people that work in the industry. That's why it's called the blacklist. Yeah. And so it gets rated on a scale. Anyways, there's different types of lists. So I submitted our project to the disability list, which features the main character with the disability. And we were lucky to get placed on the top 10 list in 2019. Oh my God, I love this. Now, what, so anybody could submit? Is that yeah. I, th I believe so, yeah. Anybody could submit, and then where does it, it get you on the list and then it gets you more noticed? Yeah, uh, people request to read it um, from different production companies that are just interested in, in that type of material. Yeah. Um, and it's just a great way to get your work out there, get your work reviewed. Um, and it was awesome that, the, that we were announced on the disability list at the Media Access Awards last year. It feels like a lifetime ago because we've been through a whole global pandemic. <laughs> Which one, was that it when we were all in person? Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. Yes, and back in 2019. You know what, talking about that, I have it, well, first of all, I'm like looking at my hair. I'm not cutting my hair until- I love it. This is over, I'm gonna donate it. I'm gonna oh, love it. it. Oh, and, yeah. And, um, but I, I was looking through some old, I was on the computer looking through 2019 pictures and going, I did that much in one year? I'm like, that all happened in that one year? I know, it feels like so long ago. <laughs> so long ago. I mean, it's 2021. Happy New Year, by the way, David. Oh, Happy New Year, Nicole. Um, I do have to say though, last year in 2020, I did do the most, I mean, we did a, over 150 episodes. <laughs> wow. Keep the biz, so. Wow, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was fun and, and I'm so excited that you are, th this is the first one in my new place. Yay. And uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's not completely settled in yet. I think I need some decorations or something. But. Oh, looks good. You got your new space, new year, new David, new meet the bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now, uh, you won that that night that I saw you, and was like, okay, right away I knew, okay, this is this this is best actress. I mean, there's no you know best actress, best actor. You know, I guess they call it best actor, huh? Yeah. Um, best actor at the. Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge and your role of Dr. Hubert? Yes. Um, what was the best thing about that experience? Oh, so cool. I mean, the whole, the best thing about participating with the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge for me is just the, is being a part of the community around that film festival and networking and meeting so many cool people, so many different artists with disabilities and really could Nick Novicki. I mean, he, the whole Easter Seals situation is so supportive and it, it was amazing. I've made so many lifelong friends. And then of course, working with Shana Garaya who directed and wrote uh, Human Helper. Um, she's my longtime creative buddy and creative soulmate forever. So it, working with her and the whole crew of Rebuilt Minds, they're just amazing. It's, I don't know. It I don't know what else to say. They're great. <laughs> It was such a fun film. I mean, I, I you. you know, I saw it there. I saw, uh, and I, I think I saw it before I saw it there too. But to see it on the big screen is so nice. So fun. We shot that in my apartment. What? <laughs> we shot that in my apartment. Oh, how cool! It was so much fun. It was so amazing. I loved it. And then I saw. I've seen it like I think I've seen that film five times. There's certain films. From the, the disability film shows, I mean, they're so good. You just want to watch them again. Oh yeah, everyone's so creative, and the things that people come up with, because it's a it's you know forty eight hour situation, and you get everything. You get the genre, and you get all these qualifications you have, you know, to put in your film, and it's just amazing what people come up with. Yeah, it's so cool. 
I, you know, and it's, it's so fun that I finally, after, I guess, seven years, I finally, this last year said, okay, I'm going to jump into it. And it was so fun to finally be involved in it. And it oh, really gave yeah. me another perspective. Amazing. Did you enjoy the whole process? Did you, your film was amazing. Oh, you know, it was so much do it, fun doing Honey Bunny and working with, with, so you amazing. Know, Blair Williamson and mm. everybody involved and and just the way it came about it was just like you had to do it like you said you only have a certain amount of time so it's like boom 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 and it was like and then it was done it was like oh my god it was another <laughs> thing you know about 2020 you know I one of the things that we talked about at performing arts um the last day of class was we know 2020 was sucky <laughs> that's one word to describe it it's definitely like, challenging <laughs> challenging but if you can think of one or two things that were positive about it so that was one of the positive things about 2020 is that I I for myself did you know 150 episodes of meet the biz and I I partaked as a partoke partake <laughs> partook in <laughs> That's a, you know what I'm saying. As a, as, as a producer for a, a, a disability film show, what about you? What was that? What was something about 2020 that was a positive for you? Yeah, you know, 2020 definitely had its mega challenges, but there are so much, so many things to be grateful for. I, you know, I'm so blessed to have stayed healthy throughout this, and my family too. And um, it's, uh, you know, just I'm so grateful for that. And you know, work-wise has been good too. I mean, I shot so many projects during <laughs> global pandemic, <laughs> and uh, which is so weird that it all happened, but I'm very blessed for those opportunities too. And um, I also, uh, something that was super life-changing for me is that I had uh, strabismus eye surgery and I had pretty severe double vision for a very long time. And I finally found a doctor that I was comfortable with to do the operation. And, you know, and, and I got, <laughs> I had eye surgery during a global pandemic, <laughs> <laughs> which was very weird. Uh, but I'm, and I can see so well now. And that's just been such a humongous blessing to me it really changed my life on so many levels oh, so man. i'm grateful to that yeah well there you go you're you know and you, you mentioned health i mean that's the number one thing you don't have the health you know it's so true i'm very blessed and i just you know continue to thank god uh for our health and i just wish that for everybody i'm ready to be done with this pandemic i want everyone happy and healthy <laughs> and mentally. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? Physically, healthy, physically and mentally. Yes, absolutely. Mental is just as important. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was watching a couple videos of, of you online uh, before the interview and two names came out, um, which maybe you could just throw a few words about them. Number one, um, the Ruderman Foundation. And then the other one was the Academy of Gold. Academy Gold. Yeah. Okay. So I was an intern for the Academy Gold program in 20, I think that was 2019 too. Yeah. It's all like, I don't know, everything has sped by since, you know what I mean? It's just like crazy. Uh, but that was, yeah, that was 2019. And I, um, I was, I was sponsored by the Ruderman Foundation. And so I went through that program and I and with a, an eye for diversity and inclusion, and I wrote some blogs for them during my internship with the academy, and it was an incredible experience. Just what I really loved about the internship was that you see the business from all angles, you know, because I'm just so used to being an actor and you know, going to the audition, and if you book the job, you go to sit, you do your job, you go home, you know, and for this, you see how much work goes into making, getting something to the screen. I mean, from financing to advertising, just to, you know, of course, casting. And, uh, and then once everything's in the can, how you, you market that and get that to the screen. And it's, 
It's incredible. How long was the whole um, process of the Academy of Gold? I think it was a month. <laughs> I remember it being so intense and yeah. it flew by and it was so much, it was like, it felt like it just was a couple of days. And and what was it like an everyday thing? I, mean, I believe uh, for me, it was three days a week. Sometimes it was a little more, um, but you know, other people had different, you know, um, time commitments. So it was kind of, you know, and then you also went to seminars and learned from all of these incredible mentors and yeah, it was amazing. I highly recommend it for anybody to apply to the Academy Gold program. I mean, it's like, ugh, it was incredible. Oh, it sounds wonderful. It makes me want to like Academy of Gold. Let's look it yeah, up. Yeah, it's really great. I mean, you learn so much. You connect with so many amazing people and it's just cool to be at the Academy, you know, it's like, I, ugh, it's awesome. It made me, you know, when you we were talking about it, it reminded me of go, when I went to ACT and their summer Congress in San Francisco years ago. Yeah. And it was, I think that was, oh my God, I think it was 10 weeks at that time. And it was Monday through Friday and we had 18 classes a week. But it, like you said, it was this intense. It's like super time. intense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe it was a month. God, uh, they're probably going to be like, Nicole, it was longer than that. But and <laughs> honestly, I think it was like a solid month or maybe two months. You know, I'm not 100% sure. It's okay. You know, right now, time doesn't matter. I know. I, time is a social construct, right? <laughs> right now, it's the twilight zone. <laughs> I am so really afraid. I was, I was watching one of your, um, uh, or quarantine brain is what you said uh, on your, one of your uh, other interviews. Um, and and you, you guys both couldn't remember the name of something. And you're like, it's quarantine brain. And I was like, yes, I have that like I can't remember what day things happen <laughs> that's why you know and everybody watching is probably the same way it's like what 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 what's my name <laughs> I know. oh god so this I was thinking of this too because again I have to go back to the first thing that I said I absolutely love you as an actress I mean your acting is just incredible because you have so many levels and you're so, you know, it feels like you're so in the moment. How, what, what is your process as an actor? Thank you so much. That is like the hugest compliment ever. Thank you so much. Um, my process as an actor, I mean, I don't, I mean, it always feels like it's different every time, you know? I, I mean, number one thing is I read the script. <laughs> A zillion times. <laughs> um, I I wish I had a, a a formula for you, but for me, it's just taking it up, reading it over and over again, um, getting the words in my mouth because I I'm very I, I memorization is um, I I struggle with it sometimes, so I like to get the. <laughs> I like to get the lines down as soon as I can. I want them in my mouth. I, I'll roll around my apartment. I'll make my husband read the lines with me over and over and over and over again. Um, and yeah, and once I feel like I know it, the words inside and out, I feel comfortable to uh, perform it and work with the other actor because I, I feel like I, I have it committed to memory. So I don't have to worry about uh flubbing a line even though they do happen it happens all the time but <laughs> but you know what I mean it's just super important to me to make sure I I have the lines committed to memory yeah yeah well and then when you're there I tell you you're there and it's it again it's so great to see I love an actress who you know in one second can can take you you know you're crying but then you start laughing <laughs> it's like oh my god yes that's what I love. I like to make you laugh before I make you cry. <laughs> boom, boom. What is that? S and M. <laughs> sure. Oh, S and M. M and M's. That's what I need right now. Chocolate. Um, <laughs> you have now. I, I read this. Now tell me if this is true. You have recurring roles on two TV series, like at the same time. I yeah, I, <laughs> I, I'm so lucky and so blessed. I mean, it was, uh, it's just really cool to say that. Um, I, 
yeah, it's just cool. <laughs> I'm very grateful for those opportunities. <laughs> now, how did like like of course Superstar? I love that show, Superstore. And when you come out, you know, it's with everybody, you, you just your energy about your character and all that. What, 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 how did you get that audition? What was that process? Uh, so um, that was a self tape that um, this was before the quarantine and coronavirus. So I believe this was back in <clears throat> uh, February of 2019. Don't quote me, but it's around there. Um, so uh, they were looking for a, a new hire or a new employee. And um, I happened to get the audition. I did a self tape. I, I did two takes of, of the work and, <clears throat> and uh, or was it one? God, see, I'm, I'm my quarantine memory. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I was so grateful. I booked the job and I, um, shot my first episode uh as you know we were hearing about the coronavirus um and then uh, i shot my episode and then uh like a week later the the whole entire industry shut down everything you know the whole i know you were there why <laughs> but it, it, <laughs> yeah it was just so crazy and um uh, wow, I don't, I don't know. That just all seemed to happen so fast. But now, how many episodes did you shoot of Superstore? I so far I shot four. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, now, th and that was after receiving the Best Actor Award. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then the other one is Good Trouble. Yes. Amazing show. So cool. Love it. Uh, yeah. Now, is that where you're playing? No, we, I'm. I'm now my quarantine break. Nikki, <laughs> Nikki, which is you, Nikki, right? That's, yeah, that, right, right, yeah, yeah. Is that Superstore? That's Superstore. Yeah. I play Nikki on Superstore and Gwen on Good Trouble. Got it. Um, which are both kind of snarky, gossipy uh, employees. I'm sensing a pattern here, David. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, it's. That's it's funny. Really and you know, and I just saw, I could see you, I mean, so many roles. I could see you as a doctor. I could see you as, as, as a president of the United States, which. Oh will... my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> That'd be great. I mean. Super cool. The sky is the limit. I think I, so. <laughs> by the way, what? I said, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, my hair, see, my, you know, every year something goes out. This year it's my hair from <laughs> last year. <laughs> I, I needed glasses. Oh my God. You just have to laugh with it all, you know. Of course. Um, by the way, I, I know that I read somewhere, and I don't know how much you could tell us, but I read somewhere you are in another show um, with somebody who I love, uh, Ryan O'Connell. Yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> I, I love Ryan so much. He's such a creative inspiration to me. Uh, and his show special. Yeah. Season two, I'm in it. Can't tell you much, but I can tell you it's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. I can't wait for the world to see it. I'm like so excited. Uh, oh my God, I can't wait. Well, that don't show, we... it means so much to me personally and to be a part of it is just like, ugh, oh my God, it's a dream come true. Now, why does it mean so much to you personally? Well, I really love how it focuses on the main character having a disability, but also him uh, on his journey of figuring out what that means to him and that internalized ableism journey, which I've been on. I, you know, go through it, you know, all the time. <laughs> And I love that he explores his sexuality on screen, which is something we don't see a lot from the disabled community. So I, I just feel like it's such a, a, a movement towards disability and inclusion in the entertainment industry. Yeah. And I'm so excited to be a part of it. And I cannot wait for you to see season two. You were going to die, David. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. And, you know, I, I remember him saying, oh, yeah, we're about to and this was like in the middle of quarantine. He says, we're about to see, see uh, uh, shoot season two. And I went, oh yeah. my God, because I know how, you know, I mean, there's 
a lot of sensuality and sexuality going <laughs> on in the in the and I'm like going oh my god you gotta be safe so he said yeah I died for my art <laughs> I was like no no oh my god Oh, he's so cool. And we had him, we had him at the studio. Um, and it was, he was, he's just amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. He's so cool. Being Working oh, with him is awesome. I bet. So what, beside, beside that, beside the super, good trouble, uh, good trouble, superstore. Uh, super good uh, trouble. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Special. What, what else is coming up? What, uh, what else is on the horizon? Well, uh, Shana, Garaya, Rebecca Zoller, and myself are producing a documentary. Um, we're in the very early stages of it, so I can't give you like the exact details, details, but I can tell you that it's going to highlight women with disabilities and the incredible advocacy work they've been doing. So I'm super excited. Uh, you'll, you'll hear a lot more of it as we kind of grow it out. <laughs> <laughs> and develop it further but uh, that's a huge passion project that I'm working on right now I love it I love it I love it I, that's good I, I, I more and more I've been I mean I don't know if you've known but I've been working on this documentary for years and it's like it has starts it stops it's this and that and then other stuff comes in the way but we just keep going with it but I love yeah. documentaries me too it was so much fun my first time producing a documentary too, so I'm going to learn a lot. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> uh, uh, so, who would you like to work with? If you, if somebody said you can work with anybody in the entertainment industry, or not, it could be anybody. Who would you like to work with? I mean, I have so many people I want to work with. Should I just like start listing them? <laughs> you, David Zimmerman. Oh, no, I work with you. <laughs> always, always, and forever. <laughs> Uh, I would love to act opposite Sandra O, oh, uh, Linda Hunt, oh. Dan oh. Levy, oh, Catherine O'Hara. I mean, <laughs> these no. are like my dream people, you know. Uh, I would love to work with Ali Stroker. I would like to collab with on anything, anywhere, at any time with Judy Human. Oh. <laughs> I know. I'm just like listing like the most cool people, right? <laughs> You know, with Judy Human, I, 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 when that movie came out, mm. in, and I saw that, and I had heard about her, and I knew about her from before, but when I saw that, I was like, oh, it was like, doom, like all of a sudden, huge fan of Judy Human. Total and, icon. She is an icon. Oh, and she, you know, she is such a wonderful, loving human being with charisma that is seeping through this window right now <laughs> yeah i'm really inspired by her just watching her speak and and you know in not only in the documentary but in other things you know and, and just seeing um what i love about her what inspires me it you know is like she gets emotional when she talks and she keeps going with what she wants to say she doesn't she keeps going you know they say you know the the you know you speak even if your voice shakes and like, I, that, when I see her, that's what I think. And, and, and she's such a powerful woman. And I'm just so grateful to everything she's done for the disabled community. It's like, she is an icon. That's like the only word I could think of. <laughs> Perfect word. Perfect word. Yeah. I just, I, I really love watching her speak and it, it moves me and inspires me. Me too. I'm there with you. Um, what do you want the most at this moment in your life? What do I want the most? Um, I want to be healthy. <laughs> I want uh, to continue that health. I'm very lucky and I want that to continue for me and my family and my friends. I just want everyone to be healthy. It's like numero uno important right now. I'll drink to that, huh? <laughs> what about you? What do you want, David? Oh, at this moment, I want to drink my lemonade. <laughs> you know, I kind of want a cheeseburger if we're going that route. Like, I could really use a cheeseburger and fries. Oh my God. That, sound, that does sound good. Um, 
<laughs> now I was thinking, you know, we're talking about drinking and I'm, I, I'm like Shirley Temple's lemonades, milkshakes. Those are all my favorites. Flesh. But lately, <laughs> since uh -oh. we've been in quarantine and you know, my family has a few of those bottles up there that have been oh. sitting up there for a while. I get vanilla ice cream with a little orange mm. liqueur on top. Oh, stop. That sounds amazing. <laughs> so, I, you know, if I could, I snort ice cream. I just love it. So good. It's delicious. One more question. Yeah. What brings you the most joy? What brings me the most joy? Uh, laughing. <laughs> I love comedy. I love laughing. I just, it's good for the soul. If it were up to me, she wouldn't be working here at all. Most of you wouldn't be. What's going on? Is everything okay? Saeed doesn't want to work in housewares. Carol's there. I just don't feel comfortable working. They're a crazy person. Okay, you know what? Let's not use the word crazy. It's, it's demeaning mm -hmm. and it's debilitating and some other word that corporate use that I can't remember, but fine, I'll move her into seasonals with Justine. Uh, no, thank you. I don't need the drama. I'm a no drama mama. I even have a t-shirt that says that. Okay, um, oh, hey, Nikki. How's your first day going, girl? It's fine. I got a really fun assignment for you. I know all about Carol, no thank you. How do you already know about her? From like six people. Sounds like a real maniac. Also, not a word we should be using. Dance with me? What? Yeah, I've never, Dance with the guy, so yeah, will you dance with me? Like right now. Yes, you idiot, right now. You better not say no, because I will tell God that you turned down a dying, lonely oh, woman who yes. had one last wish. Yes, yes. The part that fears, I don't know what, but, um, it's strong. It's always too strong. And then I just roll back out to sea again and again. <laughs> That's my life. Uh, good idea. I believe in <clears throat> very strong drugs. <laughs> Sarcasm and a hot, tight ass. Yep. That's about it. I don't need God. God doesn't need me. So you are not gonna convert me, so just stop. I'm not trying to convert you. I'm trying to offer you help. Does my insurance get billed for this help? No, that one's on the house. Humor and money in the same witty comeback. Good one, Chris. Someone has been taking notes. <laughs>